Hey guys, today I'm going to run through some of the prefab shelters you're going to find as you play Valheim. This does have information for newer players, so some of you will have encountered these already. I will have links in the description on how to skip the biomes you've not been to. Bear in mind, I'm recording this in March of 2021, so there's not information on the Mistlands, Deep North, or Ashlands yet. Those are empty biomes at this point. And with that, I am... m m m m m monster -key. Turkey. 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 Alright, so the first shelter that we're going to come up on is going to be a tower that I've never actually seen before. And it's pretty useless, so we're going to build a workbench and middle click on everything and destroy it for its wood because it's all I really care about. It's not big enough to be really useful. I could have collapsed the building simply by middle clicking on the lower supports, but I didn't think of that at the early stage, so... Eh, it's what it is, right? And now we're gonna walk our way into a prefab shelter. Uh, some berries along the way as we get into it. And Hoygan's gonna find us right quick. But when you find a village like this, it's gonna be multiple prefab shelters. You're frequently gonna find that they're gonna be fenced in resources like berries, and they're gonna continuously respawn. And so there's definitely some good use in using these as one of your villages, or uh, rather bases. Now, you see that I'm trying to uh, collapse this beehive when I kill all the structure supporting it. It takes a second to figure out that the roof is actually the last thing holding that on. And you can get a bee and use that to make a beehive, and that's a renewable resource used in other things. And so from here, I can either destroy the structure or I can use it to be one of my homes. When you build a bed, you're gonna need a fireplace close enough to it and a roof over it. I could get rid of these half walls and just have roofs, which is historically something that would actually happen. I would suggest that you drop by Shadowversity and hear what he has to say about medieval architecture. Some of the same concepts that are used in medieval styling will apply to how Vikings built their houses. So I'll go ahead and build a bed, build a roof, and set this as my spawn point so I'll actually spawn here if I die. I'm going to use the path tool to keep the weeds from clipping through the building. And uh, repair it. So you need a workbench to repair. Also, I made sure to build a workbench under the roof because if you use your hammer a whole bunch and it gets destroyed, if the workbench isn't under a roof, you can't repair your hammer, and you have to build a new one, and you can't even get the resources back like it's a building, which is really annoying. The fire I had to build on the actual ground, you can't build it on wood, but you can build it once you get to stone, but that's a long way off from here. Here I'm building some structures for a roof. Things aren't matching up right, so I'm going to go ahead and build the roof, destroy the supports, and then redo the supports to match the actual uh, roof here. Uh, you know, some quirks in the building. And you're going to find that with some of the prefabs. Uh, but overall, uh, using the prefab is really good. If you decide to destroy the prefab, repair everything, give it a little bit of time. If you middle click on things, uh, as I did earlier, if they're damaged, you only get a percentage of their value, so if it's worth two wood and it's half damaged, you only get one wood. So, it's worth it to repair the building, because you do get a really usable building out of it. And it looks more like an actual village uh, towards the end of it. And you can, of course, use just one building as your place to rest and cook food and what have you, and then other ones for storage unless you have other players to divvy it up with. Or you can just build one mega structure that maybe is a little bit less Viking-like. Let's not fill that in or it'll kill me. You do take damage from smoke inhalation. So I'll build an actual fireplace in order to help direct the smoke out of the building. I'll try to make it look decent in the process. You can actually fit two spits over one fire. Oh, a little smoke inhalation didn't build that quite right. 
and uh, support just for appearances. I'm gonna go ahead and build some uh, storage. If I were smarter, I would build these further from the light so that I get a better lit room. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you're actually gonna use this for storage, you're gonna build more storage later and just fill up the room anyway, so it's kind of a moot point, doesn't really matter. And really your base isn't someplace you spend a lot of time. And you're gonna find a lot of these buildings, it's really helpful to go ahead and build a base every five or ten minutes, just as a place to uh, save, rest, and everything, uh, just in case you die, uh, store things until later. Yeah, you also find like these little dog houses and chicken coops in these villages. I could destroy it, get the wood back, but whatever. Yeah, not a whole lot of use out of that. <laughs> Let's destroy that, go back in here, repair it up. Yeah, and again, this could be for my buddy, could just be for me. And what I'm gonna do with this one is show y'all another building style that you can do. See, so saw where I just built the fireplace, you know, in it. This place actually has a bed in it that is... You can't repair the beds that are already in place. You actually have to use your axe and destroy them. And once again, I could take out these lower half walls and just use the sides as my roof. Oop, <laughs> getting stuck on the sides. The wood that's on top there doesn't actually do anything. It's just a nice appearance, so you can do what you want with that. So, here comes a chimney and fireplace into the back. And this is going to be, again, fairly safe from enemies. Because you don't want to leave any opening large enough that anything can just walk through. Yeah, I've been working on a building just to get, have an enemy walk up the roof and punch me before. <laughs> it's, it's amusing, but it's not good for your actual home. You have to run up the 45 degree angles, but you can walk up the, I believe they're 28 degree angles. Uh, what I was saying about the roof, though, is you can stand on the top uh, between 245 pieces just fine, and those beams are very good to stand on. These supports are just to kind of band-aid that they didn't look right before, and, you know, Valheim's building is nice and easy and, you know, kind of pretty, but it's, you know, not super robust. Got a random hog just running around. And so right here, I think I'm looking for resources. And I believe the issue was that I realized that I don't actually have any stone. And although I am actually cheating, I am using invulnerability as I show you everything. I don't really feel like dying as I do a tutorial. And I have used the building cheat while I've been doing this. I'm also trying to show you some best practices, because here we are again, finding useful things as we walk through the village. Uh, you want to pick up the branches, make sure you grab the food. Uh, raspberries, blueberries, all of those are really good for later game stuff actually, so you want to stockpile them. Don't consider them just throwaway items if you can help it. Do go ahead and eat them if you need a burst of stamina, health, or, you know, other things while you're going through the early game but they will be used for recipes later on in the game. And right here, it's kind of hard to find rocks sometimes. You know, you don't have, uh, you know, the hard antler from beating Ike Theory yet. We're early on. But there are some groups of mushrooms. And whatever you find berries or mushrooms in an area, they will respawn, so go ahead and mark your map so that you can find them later on. And right there I used the hoe on there to get rid of the grass and the plants. You don't have to, it doesn't actually do anything. You can have weeds coming up through your floorboards all you want. It just doesn't necessarily look very good. And again, I can build two spits here, but 
uh, didn't have enough wood. And I actually choked out the smoke right there. So I'm going to remove the wall, build a half wall there instead. And that happens to give me the two wood that I need to build this uh, second spit inside the building. And again, they could be outside. They could be, you know, have a larger group in one room. It's whatever you want to do with them. Yeah, I choked out the smoke with the chimney. I didn't leave enough room for the smoke to escape. I probably should have turned that uh, roof to the side so it escaped out two sides instead of one. Here, go ahead and fix on the floorboards. They'll only degrade to halfway if they're not covered with a roof. Uh, and since they're already inside, they're not going to break, but it does look nicer. So this next thing I'm going to look at is in the meadows outside of your first island, you can bump into some prefab buildings and they're bigger than the ones you typically find that are empty. And they're not empty. They're going to be filled with Draugr. Draugr are undead enemies that are fairly strong. Meadows are the weakest biome, typically. And then you've got the Black Forest, which is a little stronger. And then you need to go through the swamp. And these creatures come from the swamp natively, just roaming around. But they have some villages like this just inside the meadows. Uh, again, further away from the spawn. So you shouldn't be running into these in the early game. And here I've picked a late game bow with a late game uh, arrow and they don't die from one hit and they pack a punch and these aren't even the elites and elite dragger can spawn inside these buildings if you're not very strong if you're only at the black forest even if you're in the swamp these guys can be tough and they can be a pain so don't spend too much time here if you're not properly prepared for them You over here, I'm just gonna line up a shot. There are gonna be two or three of them in there. Uh, there are gonna be some bees, and actually another building does have an elite. I'm not gonna sit here and show you everything, so this clip will end in just a second after a brief fight with these guys. But even with some late game weapons, they're annoying. But when you actually come in, these do have core wood holding up some of the pieces. This is going to be an excellent village for you once you defeat them, destroy their spawns, and uh, take out anything that is existent there that will cause them to be there after you take over them. So next we're going to look at a building inside of the Black Forest. They're going to be your first look into uh, uh, stone, and they're going to have some stairs, some wood, what have you. I wind up falling off the staircase trying to get down and I have to chop my way out of it. It's really annoying. It's really awful. This doesn't normally happen, but these places are best if you just build a, uh, a work uh, station and take the wood. Uh, you won't have a stone cutter yet. Uh, and I'm going to cut off to uh, the swamp. And one of the themes of this game is it shows you what you need to do in each, each area. So when you're in the meadows, how do you build a base Well, you find the meadows places? What's going to be coming up with stone? It shows you what stone looks like. Here it shows you elevate your base. When you're in the swamp, things on the ground are nasty. So it shows you to elevate your base to put that idea in your brain that maybe I'd be safer if I wasn't on the floor of the swamp. They're dirty, they're gross, you get wet. You don't want to be on the floor of the swamp. And when you build a base in the swamp, maybe consider putting some additional support so that if they destroy one trying to get to you, your base doesn't fall down. And so now we get into where I'm blatantly in cheat mode. And these were shot out of sequence. That's why later on, uh, or earlier on, I already had some armor that I don't have here. But you get this silo, and this is actually built with stone around it because you can't actually cut into the ground quite right in this game but if you don't have a roof over your building it will actually still give you freezing damage once you build the roof you're safe from it 
but that's not the only building you find. I wish that they'd shown this sooner, but you can see that they've built a nice core wood house uh, up here on the snow-covered mountain. And it's got chests like anywhere else. Uh, it's just nicer and fancier than your basic meadow space. The last two bases didn't show too much off. It does have a wood pile. It is useful. Uh, there are covered sections right here, and they're always going to be in various states of repair. Some are going to be really nice. Some are going to be, you know, absolutely fallen, collapsed, and unusable. Uh, so I'm going to build this right here, and it's really amusing. Right, you know, for a second you could see that I could repair my stuff. And then it's trapped under there, and I can't actually find the button again. And if I remove the roof, then it's not going to work. So I'm just going to destroy it, move it elsewhere, and, uh, you know, call it. But uh, the snow is definitely unforgiving. you got to make sure you build plenty of shelters. And remember that floor is not shell uh, cover. You have to build it under a roof. So right here, make sure I build it under a roof. Uh, so I can repair that hammer in case it gets destroyed while I work on my base. Uh, because the mountains are completely unforgiving. Yeah, shut the door. That'll protect me from enemies with this, uh, you know, completely open base. One of the last things you're going to bump into is going to be a much prettier castle. And these, uh, castles are going to be, uh, pretty bad state of disrepair. This one comes with a nice skeleton spawn, and there's a nice big skeleton to start. And then we get a drake that comes and wants to wreck our day. So, you know, again, mountains are <laughs> problematic. Stone is a lot safer, and so right here we could take this castle for ourselves, upgrade it, uh, or just use it for an idea to build elsewhere. The game is really about what you can imagine or what can be shown to you to help you out in the early game. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And we're going to move on for just uh, one last look. And that's going to be to the Plains. The Plains is even more unforgiving than the others. Because, of course, it's the next biome. It's more difficult, everything else. On top of that, when you look at this building, you're going to see some things you've never seen before, which normally means that you haven't gotten what you need in order to work with that material yet. Well, the, bla the planes really breaks that mold. Uh, and what it is is there are building materials that you can't use. Yeah, you can see the kind of damage that those guys deal out. But you see that kind of leafy looking structure there. And spikes there, and a totem that's, uh, well, we'll leave that if you're, uh, looking at this for the first time for what it does. But there is lots of usable stone, there is usable wood. God, these guys are brutal. And so you can definitely put down a uh, crafting table and be able to uh, you know get some useful materials out of this but there's just gonna be a lot that you can't uh, the good thing is that it seems like they generally don't respawn once you destroy their camp and especially if you build on it then it seems to uh, be claimed as yours but you can't work on some of these stations There, I've destroyed something. Let's take the totem. So here we are climbing up, and we're getting some of these weirder materials. Uh, there's a fooling just right there. And I destroyed the uh, way that I was going to go up.
plop that down. And naturally, he's going to come in a direction where I need to defend it, so run off so he goes away from it rather than chopping it down to get to me. And there you can see the materials that you can destroy. And you'll hear a lovely berserker. And I'm just going to go ahead and get out of here. So those are the types of fabricated shelters that you're going to see. Uh, some of them you can definitely take materials if that's all you want. Others are going to be really nice spaces for you to get started. If you find a place, go ahead and mark it on your map and uh, bear in mind that you can throw a roof over it, shelter it up so that you can safely sleep in it and get started. So with that, take care guys, happy hunting, and have fun with it.